Thank you, everyone, for joining us in the fifth Cyber Risk Summit. Um, it's been uh, it's been a couple of these that we've done so far, and it's so exciting to see um, an audience that is growing and growing. I think we're hitting almost a thousand people um, that had signed up to the to the event to learn more about the next trends in managing cyber risk and vulnerabilities. I'm very, very, very happy um, to be here um, and talk a bit more about where and what um, Vulcan is going to do in the next couple of years, as well as sorry, as well as being in a in a position um, to tell you um, and share some of the insights we have gathered in the past uh, in the past year. Um, so I'll start from what I think we all know. Um, between 2021 to 2022, um, unfortunately, nothing has really changed in the macro environment of the market. Still, security vulnerabilities are the number one source of risk for um, enterprises and small and small to medium businesses around the United States and around the world. Um, it is no shock that vulnerabilities as a term is becoming wider and wider. When we say security vulnerabilities, we don't mean only CVEs. We mean misconfigurations in the cloud. We mean mistreated data. We mean open APIs. Um, all of these things eventually lead to um, potential breaches. They might be a breach in the future, and we need to manage them in the context of them. The big challenge in today's world is that if we look a couple of years ago, eight to 10 years, we eventually had a fairly confined operation of detection. And we also had a fairly confined attack surface. We had to take care of our network, we had to take care of our applications, and in some cases, we had to take care of our code. But in the modern world, we are packed with sensors. These sensors are scanning and observing and finding risks across multiple attack surfaces. Some of these sensors today are developing themselves to be a multi-attack surface sensor where we are getting more and more of a single sensor versus, versus multiple. And this creates a reality where we are getting also a lot of the duplications of vulnerabilities, a lot of the duplications of assets. It's becoming very difficult to control the entire environment, especially because the number of vulnerabilities is also growing. When we started the company five years ago, we stepped into an enterprise environment and seen something like a million to 10 million different vulnerability instances. These days, when we step into an enterprise environment, we're talking about hundreds of millions of different vulnerability instances that are coming in. All of them require attention. Um, all of them require to adhere to a certain SLA. Not all of them are critical. Not all of them are urgent. But definitely, we need to address them, both from a compliance standpoint as well as from an operational standpoint. And the more attack surfaces we, as security practitioners, would like to monitor and make sure that are secured, the harder our job will be and we'll get. Now, when we look at this problem from an organizational standpoint, what we also see, and excuse me that maybe the, um, the view is a bit small, what we also see is that responsibilities across the tech surfaces also differ. In the old world or in the world 10 years ago, we as information security practitioners, we owned detection and we were responsible on notifying the owners of remediation, usually in IT. But in today's world, the sole ownership had only remained in security's hands when it comes to the overall security program. But as we break these programs down, as we look at who owns each program and also especially who owns risk remediation, not only the general attributes of setting the controls, trying to implement the scanners and so on, we see multiple teams that takes higher and higher and higher stakes in this risk management process. This is natural. It's part of a global trend where we're trying to empower teams outside of security to be responsible on security findings. They are the ones that will eventually fix them, and they are the ones that will eventually be held accountable alongside security if something is actually getting uh, getting uh, to a state where it is used within a breach. But regardless to all of that, this reality creates um, a world where we as security practitioners are required to collaborate more, to work with more teams across the enterprise, to think bigger, to empower more. And unfortunately, in the realm, in the world where multiple sensors are available, this task is harder than ever. 
Now, we hear it from everywhere. Security is becoming the governing body. The executioners are people outside of the security team. Collaboration between security and their allies in IT, developers, cloud, DevOps, admins of SaaS, business units are becoming the most significant allies into the, into the risk management process. And we as a company had put it as a main, main, main goal to not only provide our security um, users with benefits, but also to empower the people outside of security to eventually manage and remediate risk faster. Um, when we look at what we are learning in the, in the past year, eventually the one main thing, you can read it on your own, but the one main thing that we are seeing is that more and more stakeholders are coming to join the party. If remediation was part of the very thin and narrow world of one attack surface, today it's all around the um, events that are happening like log4j or open SSL three vulnerabilities are impacting the entirety of the operation. They're impacting everyone across the, across the stakeholders room. And we are trying to build technologies and to empower users to do that in a way that will help them collaborate better and scale better. Now, when we look at the future, I think nothing um, is of shock still we're seeing that consolidation is a huge, huge, huge driver um, in risk management programs, taking different insights from different uh, scanners and putting them in one place and assigning them into context. More attack surfaces are being scanned and addressed by different security vendors. Um, SAS is a prominent one that we are seeing all over. Data in the cloud is another one. Many different, different attack surfaces that are being now observed by dedicated tools that were built to secure them and not as a nice add-on feature in a bigger platform creates a reality where we just need to do more. And the outcomes of that is that as we observe these different areas of, uh, of responsibility, we have to also address the risks that are or, or have always been part of our world, if it's supply chain that is a big, uh, a big topic these days, and also grabbing or creating a lot of scanners we've just seen Palo Alto Networks um, buying um, a company in $300 million to address software supply chain and general supply chain issues. Um, these things are going to continue to accompany us as an industry as we move forward and as we progress. We, as a concept, are migrating away and are recommending our customers in the industry to migrate away from the focus on vulnerabilities and starting to discuss risk. Risk is wider. It's within context. And it's addressable from a business perspective. To do that, we have to take all of these different signals and consolidate them, dedupe them and correlate them, enrich them with relevant data, both for our business as well as, as well as the threat landscape, provide analysis and prioritization to allow this enormous amount of noise to become precise and actionable, and eventually to empower collaboration in an automatic, automatic fashion trying to help find the right owners to the right code pieces or the right assets and eventually provide them with the tools that are empowering them to operate swiftly and quickly around remediation. All of that from one single place. Otherwise, it's going to be extremely hard to govern the situation. Um, we uh, very quickly as a vendor are focusing on exactly these areas. We do that by aggregating data. We connect to over 200 different tools today through their APIs. We take their data around vulnerabilities in. We enrich this data with a variety of signals from threat intel to MITRE attack tactics and techniques to um, business different att business attributes that we're getting from the CMDBs and from the users. We provide the analysis on them and eventually we help find the owner of the issue and assign a task to the owner in order to immediately and swiftly get this problem resolved. When we look at what Vulcan will do um, in the next year, a couple of highlights. One, and I think the most important one, is what we call the next level of risk prioritization. In the world where we have so many different vulnerabilities, we can't be in a position where we're chasing them one after the other, even if they are extremely well prioritized from a risk perspective, we have to start putting them more and more into context. This means that our job will be to connect the different dots, different vulnerabilities and how they are, um, how they are sitting as part of an attack graph, an attack path, and eventually trying not to break or fix a specific vulnerability, but trying to break the attack path that attackers can get in order 
to eventually exploit a specific vulnerability. We're doing that by using and implementing a graph technology that would allow us to take all of these different risk entities from assets to vulnerabilities to insights on them to ownership and put them in one place so we can answer questions like, who are our Salesforce users that are under the most risk because they have laptops that are impacted by vulnerabilities that allow phishing or remote code executions? Or questions like, show me the applications that are running with a vulnerable piece of code on a vulnerable piece of infrastructure in the cloud. They are exposed to the internet, and this is why they are under higher risk than their twins that are not exposed to the internet. This all and the entire thing will be a very, very, very big point of focus for us as Vulcan from a risk perspective. And from an operational perspective, this year we're going to finalize the solution to what we call the ownership problem. We want to allow you as security folks to easily, quickly, and automatically identify and find the owners of the issues that were found on the different assets you're scanning. Um, these could be code owners, admins, owners of assets, developers, DevOps people. We need to be in a position where we can identify them quickly, assign them with a task in a scalable way, and automatically provide, provide them with the tools that will allow them to remediate the risk. This is the core of the two sides of the problem we're going to encourage and engage more in solving. And these are just the tip of the iceberg of the things that we are planning for 2023. Um, we're looking forward for the opportunity to work with many, 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 many different customers, both new and um, current on these different features. We are happy to exemplify them as we go along the year to each and every one of you. So stay tuned.